every job is always going to be at least three legs. Jobs can have more legs, but the idea is every leg costs you one ration. So Makes sense. Yeah. Doing athletic checks costs you one ration because that's basically you eating more food to benefit off the calories. Uh, you know, you also just spend one yourself. ration for melee attacks, etc. You know, uh, but outside of that, that's the only things you spend rations for. You can also spend rations to give yourself a further plus one to the roll. So you could, for example, uh, Ty could spend one additional ration to have a three in his unarmed for one attack to really lay into somebody. Uh, that's why, um, what is it? Uh, it's the, I think it's the charged quality. Let's see. Uh, yeah, charged. Uh, the charged quality. Any gear that has the charged quality, you can spend additional charges to give yourself a further plus one to the roll. So, you know, most of the guns have that. So, if you're really, really worried that you m may mess up, you can spend additional charges to boost your roll. Uh, next thing's up. Uh, yeah. You spend one refresh. Uh you can fully restore all the charges to one of your pieces of gear. Uh, so, you know, you could fully restore all your rations because in your backpack, you have more rations. Mm -hmm. uh, for Ty, you have a little bit more upkeep because for every leg you guys take, your Dronky uses one charge, which represents the fact that it, you know, has a battery. And it's using that battery to follow you guys. But on the plus side, you know, that's it. It just uses that one charge, but it comes with all its other benefits, you know. The fact that it doesn't make noise, so it doesn't attract zombies. And it has a shotgun, in case you need a shotgun. Uh, and in the case of everybody else, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, yes. Uh, is there anything else that should be noted? I think we're all... Good. You got Ubix specs. Jim yeah. Pan's got a laptop. Uh, right. So, uh, this is the first session, so none of you really have stress, but you can still do life events to start establishing things about your character and their relationship with your dependents. Okay. Uh, as um, yeah. Question. Do takers have to leave the um, uh, leave the Enclave all the time, or are they, or can they kind of stay at the enclave most? Of the time? Uh, basically, every job is meant to be one every week or one every, you know, uh, one every half week. So okay. you're you're generally trying to set up a score. Then you're using the because one bounty represents um, enough rent and enough food to basically sort of support yourself for one week. Got it. So that's one of the things is you're, uh, you're also using that time to rest and recover, uh, you know, uh, that's also basically waiting for your upkeeps to come in. You're paying mm -hmm. the money upkeep to you know, Got get it. the bullets. Well, I'm more referring to um, uh, does my dependent uh, genie does she have to go out and do missions and shit like that every week? Uh, she may, she may also not because uh, it depends on what's I'm, going on. I'm yeah. paying for her partially. Yeah. So she's going to be probably once every other week rather than once a week. Got it. And I will say this: she's probably doing lower risk jobs, convoy, uh, convoy protection of the well traveled routes, things like that. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so since this is your first week, technically, and first session, you guys could, you know, easily do double work without any effects uh, because you don't have any stress. Uh, that needs to be healed. Uh, work includes the following things. Uh, hiring employees is useful for if you are trying to sell something. You know, oh, we have this good that we need to sell. We randomly found something that's not easily tradable, but somebody could want. You know, so we could basically hire a middleman merchant, yeah, who will hold on to it for us and sell it for us for a certain price, yeah. and he'll take a cut. Yeah, which is how you get um, investment. Basically, investment is you 
um, that's one of the ways to do an investment. Uh, pursue an investment is also, you know, hey, let's look for something that we can invest money in. You know, such as this guy's trying to get milk to the enclave or trying to set up a garden on the enclave, so he needs investors. Uh, pursue and we can get return on investment. Yes. Uh, you get bigger return the more you put into it. Uh, then there's insider trading, which is basically bolstering your investment so you can make more money off it. Uh, another work thing is fulfilling one of your milestones to retire. Mm -hmm. Or you can sell gear that you guys have gotten that you're not going to use. Like uh, we came across a couple extra assault yeah, rifles, yeah, and pistols. we are all well armed. Whatever. Yep. Uh, troubleshooting is basically something's happened with uh, your um, your employee or something that needs to be dealt with. Uh, <laughs> Manipulating the supply slash demand of a good so you can make it so something's more, you know, expensive. Uh, that's all the stuff that you get after you guys are aware of what jobs are available. So then, first things first, everybody make a networking check, which we get to do. So, first up, uh, you roll a d10 plus whatever your networking skill value is. Plus charisma? No, networking skill value. No charisma. So no, no charisma. Your charisma okay. determines your cap of what your skill can be. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, you have ways of... Uh, there are certain things that you add your... Um, I rolled a four. That's probably not good. Well, then you roll another d10. I roll a two. So see, so roll, roll a second d10. Oh, okay, you got I a beat critical it. critical success. Woohoo! Two and two. Uh, Kiri, roll another d10. If you get a two or a one, you'll pass. You do not. So, well, you're trying to network. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the other way you could do this is roll 2d10, like so. And, and just mentally add and then just mentally add your number because they're pretty to small. The fir to the is. first one. Yeah. 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 So, for example, in that case, uh, that three and seven. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, Ty, Ty can't pass. Uh, he can critically fail. Go, Ty. Come on, Ty. D10. Come on, Ty. Don't fail. Don't fail hard. Don't fail hard. Go Come on, Ty. Roll another d10. Let's see if you crit fail. Go, Ty. Go, Ty. I believe in you. And Jim Pen. Hey, Ty's fine. <laughs> he just fails normally. Yeah, he just fails normally. And Jim Pan, you got to roll another d10. Yep. So from 1 to 10, that's... Well, it's 1 over 10. So uh, Jim, Pan Jim Pan all succeeds, but I critically succeeded, so... Yep, so you guys get two pieces of info for the crit success and one piece of info for the normal success. So, here's where we come to. Uh, so, Seawalt, uh, there is... You could either learn the supply and demand of one of the things that your Enclave needs... You could also scout out a job. So you could learn, you know, like, oh, this is paying really well. Uh, or you could look for a job, you know, like, oh, somebody has a job. Uh, and what because of your critical success, you could learn the supply demand cost of two items from your enclave. So, you know, you could learn the price of both few, um, food and and fuel or you know food and wood or fuel and wood okay um guys i'm i'm thinking i find out about the supply and demand yeah, um, and of uh, two of our important resources and then we'll have uh, jim pan try to find us a job related to that can we do that sounds good well i was going to point out if you guys are doing that that's not going to be you're finding a job that's you know you guys are looking to find you know a place to get the supplies from you know you're setting up your oh. own job Okay, so we're setting up our own job. So yeah. we're basically okay. okay. Yeah. That, so we're that, hunting the materials. Yeah, you're basically like, oh yeah, this place has got a bunch of wood, or you're going to the Luddites because they have a bunch of wood. That they be and they fucking about. hate us. I mean, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the I, I'm 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 definitely want to look up how uh it, how is the supply and demand of food right? Okay, and food. What another one? Uh, Food and what? Fuel or lumber? I would like to know what food is first. 
Or do I have so you to get, You get two of them. But do I have to choose the second one right now? Or can I find out then decide what I want to do with the second one? Uh, yeah, you can... Uh, you can find out... Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll make the uh, stone bowl prices visible. Uh, and Jim Pan technically could give you the third one. Yeah, true. So, you know, rather than finding a job, you are basically all going in okay. on a take. Got it. So, yeah. Okay, so supply and demand are almost perfectly aligned, so there's probably not a big profit margin. There's I mean, a slight, but not a big. Well, keep in mind that you combine supply and demand together for, you know, the total value of haul for one thing. So, uh, how you figure out how much you'll make off a, a job like this is you look at each of your character's hauls. So, you have a haul of. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ty has a haul of two, and his drone gives him four more haul. So he's able to haul in six. I can so, haul in two. Yeah. So that's eight. And then, Kiri, what's your strength? My strength is. Two. Okay. So you're at ten. And then, Jim Pan's strength will make it at least 11. So you would take 11, you know, the that number, plus the supply. Wait, Jim Pan, you're at uh, two strength? Uh, no, there are uh, one. So 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah. So you would take that 11, and then you'd multiply it by the supply plus demand, which is also 11. So you'd make 121, you know, bounty off of delivering food to the Enclave. And that and that's our, is, the, is that the profit margin? Uh no, that's how much total money you would bring in. And then you'd Got subtract it. your, you know, upkeep and stuff. So you would take all your upkeeps, put them together, and that would give you your profit margin. Uh, oh, well, uh, sorry, I, I'm more talking about what does it cost us to get that amount of food in the first place? Where do we uh, get nothing. it from? I think you that's assuming to, we... Okay. You, okay. you know, it's it. doing something like, you know, raiding an old, you know... Uh, raiding an old factory. military base? Yeah. Or, yeah, okay, I or, or other yeah. rations, you know. Okay, something. Um, I might as well check up what the fuel prices are like right now. Okay, so you're going to learn fuel prices. Okay. Yeah. Uh, currently, fuel is not in a very big supply or the... Uh, yeah. So it's only a nine. Yeah. So you'd make 99 bounty off it. Uh, the supply and demand will change, you know, between sessions. But the thing is, you also can use your work actions, because remember, this is just basically you guys looking for jobs, and then you can do your actual work actions to, you know, de you know, you can make it so there's a more need of a supply or more need of demand. Got it. Um, and, uh, uh, Jim Pan, do you want to burn your information to find out the supply of uh, what our lumber is like, or do you want to look for a job? So we have multiple options. So we can diversify um, our choices. I guess Jim. Hmm? Okay, so uh, Jim Pan, uh, do you want to look? At, do you want to find a job, or do you want to uh, figure out what the cost of wood is right now? Jimpan! Jimpan! Jimpan's dead. Jimpan. I'll, I'm just gonna say that Jimpan gives you the wood cost. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, there you go. Oof! That's high. Yes. That's 16 times 11. Yep, it's a lot. You, got, you guys wanna go on a wood run? And you said we also have work actions where we could increase the supply and demand? Yeah, so now that we, now we, since you guys have done your networking actions and there's no more networking things that can happen, we now look at work-life balance. So, uh, this is the first session, so you can easily sack your life event to do a double work event. Now, first up, uh, you guys, um, can look for, um, you guys can do... 
uh, manipulating supply and demand of a good. So, see, well, you could look into increasing the demand, you know. I uh, convincing someone to start a big construction project. Yeah, that's one way. Uh, supply, you could also just buy up some of the wood yourself. Uh, or convince somebody else to buy up some of the wood, you know, that, you know, oh yeah, it will go up in price if you buy it up right now. You know, you're going to have to find somebody that's willing to, you know, shoulder the cost of buying said wood, but yeah, that's one of the ways you could do it as well. I think it might be easier right now, guys, if we just increase the demand because we don't have a lot of money to uh, fuck with the supply. Yeah. There's also, of course, you know, burning the supply. Yeah, that's something not yet. No, no, okay. we're we're not that evil. Okay. It's just easier to convince a couple of guy, uh, convince the, uh, to give it some, convince one of the merchants to do a big expansion to their, um, warehouse or something. Okay. Something's uh, gonna require a lot of. Who's the merchant, Seville? Who are you talking to? Well, I am the fucking face, so I guess I'm gonna have to be the one to do this. Well, yes, you're also the one that first said it, so you're the it. first person up. So okay. you're doing um, demand stuff because we're yeah. doing work events first. I'm I'm gonna go. Um, I guess I'm gonna go to uh, since I've got decent networking. I'll go to the. Um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go. To, I, I might actually. I might actually go to the merchant that told me about the food and fuel situation, and uh, and just kind of just try to chat him up. Um, let's call him. Sh- Call him. I'm just gonna. Go, his name is Schmitty. He, he he's gonna be our go-to merchant. You guys okay. all agree? Schmitty is the go-to merchant. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to Schmitty's uh, kind of warehouse and shop um, on the uh, on the mid. All right. I guess I can go back to our shop and just try and collect some supplies that we'll probably need. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, Schmitty I'm going, I'm of Schmidt's Food Emporium. Hey, <laughs> sa, is it? Mm. Back already, Willy boy. <laughs> ah, we uh, have been working with my uh, with my team. May have uh, may have uh, come across an interesting situation in the in the. Bo- Oh, Willie Boy's got a proposition for me. Well, I know you've been planning on doing expand an expansion to your uh, uh, to uh, to this place. You know, get a bit more space. So we can get some more food. And st- oh yeah, yeah, I have. I might have a line on. Uh, might have a line on what the lumber situation's like. Oh, costs going down then, eh? Cost going up. Ooh, that's so you may want to buy now. Buy now. Mm. Buy now and start the work. You know what, Willie boy? Mm. Ah, Willie boy. Uh, hmm. I, I can see about doing that. Get it now while well, it's a bit cheaper, but it's still pretty costly. Uh, Willie boy, if you, if I do this for you, I need you to do something for me. Oh, what's that? Well, I, I've been thinking about something. Our uncle, you know, we, we're decent on food because of trade. We were able to trade up with a lot of things. But I think we could really utilize some mini farms you know we got certain areas where we could set up some hydroponics some mushrooms etc a little gr- some greenhouse some greenhouses on the uh, on some of the unused upper parts of the state ah yeah there you go willy boy so if you can that would also increase that would also increase the uh, demand that would also increase uh, i'm just kind of thinking in my own head this is going to increase the demand for wood because you got to build it out of something exactly willy boy so I get up some of that wood right now. You and your friends invest to help me get the supplies I need. Do you want it up front, or uh... I'll I'll give you it after you've gotten your uh, your investment that you're working on right now. 
how much uh, how much are we how much how much you want us to invest whatever you're willing but it has to you know at least break bank as it were uh, so in total uh, he wants each of you to invest at least two bounty oh yeah that I, I was thinking like the entire group invest like 20 or 30 of a, well, of the bounty yeah, we make. That, that's a total of and, and, eight. I yeah. mean, that eight is still yeah. a lot considering that's enough to, you know. But we're dealing with 11 times 16 yeah. uh, for the wood yeah. job. Well, I'm just giving you what the minimum is. You ha you're you going to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Schmitty will. Uh, yeah, hundred. we can get 198 out of this job. And, I think we can easily invest a lot more. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Schmitty will uh, Schmitty will buy some some stuff, which will make it so that the uh, their demand is higher. Yeah, or the supply is higher. You'll find out in a second. Uh, in exchange, after everything is done, uh, you you guys are going to have to take some of your payment, and you're going to be investing in his thing. Speaking of which, uh. Before He's we going... make a full agreement, mind if I talk to talk to my team, make sure they're okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that, Willie. Uh, uh, should so... be, it shouldn't be shouldn't be more than maybe thirty minutes. Okay, yeah. So uh, also, see, well, you can make me a sensitivity check. I am also going to use one charge of my uh, glasses to increase it by. T so you just go over to your glasses and you click the little tab down thing by charge. Uh. So there we go. Yep. There you go, and that will give you another plus two to your charge to your roll. So you'll be rolling with a what, a nice plus three. Oh, oh, fucker that one up. Uh, even with a plus three, I still yeah. lose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't worry about that. That just means you don't know what the risk is going in. So you know. Uh, yeah. It, of, of this, well, look, we're, we've got a good payday. We got a yeah. good potential payday coming. We only have to invest about eight bounty in it, and that's not a lot from the payday. And I'm thinking we invest a little bit more and play a little bit risky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, as long as you guys can make your money in, uh, yeah. Schmitty will. Uh, well, I've got to talk to the team before I agree to oh, this. So, well, so yes, nothing has gone forward yet. Yeah, it won't go forward until the rest of the group all agrees to put in some bounty. Yeah. Uh, yep. So that will be uh, that will be your work event, uh, and coming back to Schmitty will be a second work event, because you're basically negotiating with him, and that will let the others all roll their sensitivity. Okay, uh, got it. Which means that Understood, potentially so. all of you, will, one of ones of you, will find the risk. So, uh, Jim Pan, Kiri, and Ty, you can all roll uh, sensitivity checks. Uh, sensitivity, Ty, roll. Uh, you can do the just 2d10 together. Yeah, guys, just roll the 2ds and just do the math in your head. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that... I so I like, rolled a 10 total then. Well, uh, it's you, 4 you, over you, 6. You yeah, 4 over 6. Remember, your first number, you want it to be higher than your second number. That's the mechanic. Oh, so that's first number has to be higher than second. So in that case, no. Yeah, because that's the entire idea. That's why the um, dice that... Uh, Jim Pan succeeded. Oh, and Ty critically failed. Uh, you're like, this is a good investment. Uh, Blue Blue is 100% aboard. He's 100% aboard investing. Uh, Jim Pan rolled a success. Uh, so yeah, actually, you guys are aware of the risk. Uh, food Emporium. Let's see how many... Ooh. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Uh, liquidity and risk. Uh, so if you guys look at investments, you can now see a liquidity is how many sessions until it pays off. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the thing is, Next session it won't pay off, but the session after next, because one whole session has to yeah. pass. So, uh, and it's got a risk of four, meaning that, uh, you know, actually that's really good for you guys. Uh, yeah. So it's a fairly moderate to low risk investment? It's a low risk investment, because uh, without any modifiers, 
he only doesn't make money back, you know, 30% of the time. Okay, so and, otherwise we break even. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, what it is is uh, if he passes the check, which is just he rolls a straight D10, plus any insider trading you guys do next session, uh, if he passes, you guys make back your money and more. You make back 50% more. So you can make a lot of money. If he fails, you lose 50% because, you know, it didn't turn enough of a profit. And is this and is this going to be a constant thing, or is it just a one-time thing? It's a one-time thing. It's, it's him basically paying you back for stuff. Got it. Understood. Yeah. In the case of it not coming back, it basically means... Turns out nobody was really interested in buying mushrooms right now. Understood. Um, I, I think it's worth the risk, guys. We'll put a. I think we should put up a, and we can put up a decent amount from our pro. We can. We only need to put in, and I'll just say the equivalent. Uh, 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 eight bounty. We only got to put eight bounty into a minimum. We can, and we can kind of decide how much of uh, the haul we want to dedicate to it after we figure out how much we got when we get back. I assume by eight bounty, you mean like between all of us and not eight each, right? Eight total, two each. So it's very so it's actually a very low investment, with though not a high rate of return, um, a kind of a moderate to low risk, based on what uh, Jim Pan is telling us. Yep. And it should and it should return on investment pretty quick. So it's not going to be a lot of money tied up. Worst case scenario, we lose a little bit. This is very concerning. I still like it, but it's very concerning. Look, it's not. I don't think it's a lot of money to have to pony up in exchange. We get a. We can potentially get a higher. We can potentially get a higher uh, price for the wood we do get hold of. Are we in agreement to have this little side deal with uh, Schmidt. He hasn't turned. He hasn't uh, turned us wrong so far. Okay. I'm in. I hesitantly put forth my two bounty. No, we, no, we pay him after. after. We yeah. pay oh, him after. after the job. Yeah, we pay him after the job, and I'm saying, we just, based on how much we can get from the wood, oh. that's when we pay him. So we okay, decide on, at the end. We decide at the end how much we're uh, going to... Oh, good. Okay. Not at the beginning. So this is basically, he's investing in us, and in exchange we'll invest in him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh... So I guess, guys, uh, get your gear out. Yep. Well, I've got to go back to Schmitty and let him know uh, we're interested. Yep. All okay. right. So you can Since. now make me a persuasion check. Any bonuses or negatives? Uh, just your persuasion. Uh, this is just determines how much he's going to increase everything by. You know, I got first it, failure means he just it didn't change enough. So I'll go back to Schmitty to sit down, and at, I guess I guess you know he's got a counter or something. I'll sit down at the counter and say, "Okay, Schmitty, we're uh, we're definitely interested." He's rubbing down a bar glass. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah, okay. yep. Yeah. Um, I got a basic success. Yeah. Uh, so Schmitty will, in, um, since Schmitty's buying up things, that's going to increase the supply number because there's less around for everyone else. It's Got it. I forgot that the supply, the, the lower the number, the more the supply, the higher the demand, the more it's one. So he, he's eating up uh, supply and demand. Yeah. Now Sorry, that, supply. Yeah. Now then, so that's your two actions. You invested in Schmitty. Yep. Or rather, yep. going to. Uh, yep. He, in exchange, he's effectively investing in us. Yeah. And you guys, yeah. which is important. Yay. Um, now that you guys could increase demand. Okay, so here's where we get to the fun thing. So, you guys can't, you know, invest in your investment with Schmitty yet. And not until next session when he's officially gone public with it. Uh, but what you guys can do, because you all have two actions except for Will. Jim yeah, Pan, I was the one who set up the deal. Yeah, because you did your two actions. Uh, Jim Penn, you could... Uh, you could do you could look for another investment for later on uh, see if there's an investment around you could also try and manipulate the demand so could tie so could Kiri manipulating demand would basically be 
uh, puffing up the fact that everybody needs lumber. Everybody yep. needs lumber. They do. Okay, so Kiri, do you want to try and do that? Do you want to puff up people about how they need lumber? All right, and that would be what check? Well, I mean, what's your tact? How are you going to get everybody to, you know, want to buy some wood? <laughs> buy Force wood. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. No, well, word on the street is apparently there might be some kind of big project coming along. It needs a lot of wood. So. Uh, that'll actually get people to go out and uh, get wood. You're wanting to tell people to... Uh, what? You want to convince people to buy you, wood, you, not yeah, not. You're, yeah. You you need to say that there should be, there's a, probably gonna be a surplus. There's like a surplus. You're gonna say like, hey, there's surplus of wood, or it's a good time to build. You don't want to say that there is going to be a big project because that'll people go, hey, I better go out and scavenge wood, which means we get competition. Yeah, we're trying to avoid that. All right. Yeah. You want to yeah yeah you want to bolster you know the uh, want to have wood, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Can't really think of a good way to do that. Give me a foresight check. Oh, great success. Okay, um... Well, you... Uh, playing to the fact that the uh, latent community, wherever they're set up in the stadium requires you know uh it's uh you know not the best place in town uh you can play to it by pointing out hey guys uh you guys really need this to help you know make the latent community even better because the latent community is the worst side of town uh it's it got it's, it's, it's it, it, they're they're the closest to the tunnel of of all the groups. They're the closest to the tunnel tunnels, i.e., the industrial sector. Yes. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you're playing off that. Uh, you know to play off that, and oh yeah. So that's what you're doing for your first work action, Kiri, is you're spending your time uh, because I'm just gonna say with your crit success, you know what to do. Uh, you basically pour in the right amount of uh, chutzpah about, hey, and you're going to increase the demand by one. Uh, so, you know, everything's getting together. Uh, now then, uh, Kiri, you can either do a, another work action or you could do a life action. I think I'll do a life action. Okay. So... Uh, Kiri, who's playing Jessica? Uh, who is she? No, who's playing Jessica? And then you get to tell that person who Jessica is. Is Jim Pan playing Jessica? Is Seawall playing Jessica? Is Ty playing Jessica? Uh, I don't think I would be, um, convincing enough as a Jessica. No offense. Seawall, you think you could play a Jessica? Would need to know the personality type. That's uh, where he then tells you what it, they are. Yeah. All right. Uh, she's basically uh, Jimbo's uh, younger sister by about two years. She. Uh, okay, that technically would still make her a latent, even the or no. Uh, no, she's not necessarily a latent. She could okay, be a she's latent. Not a latent though. So that makes her life a little bit easier than my than his, personality wise. So. Yeah. She does love her brother, and at the same time, she, because she's younger, she can't exactly get a whole lot of work in outside of like, you know, like safe jobs in town. So not exactly a whole lot of big ones. So, i.e., assisting in inventory, assisting the convoys get ready, yeah. things of that, stuff like courier that. Courier stuff. Yeah. 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 You said a courier fixing. Um, Sorry, yeah, you said you said courier um, and inventory. Yeah, basically, kind of menial work yes. that is well, safe inside. Well, that's mm -hmm. what every dependent basically does when they're you know being a dependent for more or less. Now then, uh, so Kiri, are you doing a coping event, a support event, or a engage event? 
What exactly would be an engaging event? Engage is basically you and Jessica are doing something that establishes the detail about the Enclave, such as uh, maybe there's an arcade, or you're going to, there's a little restaurant that's been set up. Uh, you know, it's establishing a detail about the Enclave, or maybe the, they've set up a small soccer field and some portion of it because they have room for it. Uh, things like that. It's like maybe some establishment. Uh, we can head towards... Uh... Uh, what's the part? Which part? Which of these notes is the one I want? Uh, which is the one that has about what each part of the city is? Enclave Stone Bowl. There we go. Uh, we'll basically be like having like, you know, like some lunch down in the uh, marketplace town square area in midfield. Okay, so you're having lunch down there. So there's a restaurant. Okay. Uh. Uh, so start it Put as a subset of midfield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are you eating? Uh, eating, uh, primarily, like, a very, very light meat dish. Like, very little meat, but it's mostly, like, a, a lot more of, like, vegetables and fruits and stuff that can be easily grown. But with some meat here and there. Okay. Okay, so yes, so Jessica, you're having one of those fancy marketplace uh, salads. You know, it's an actual salad with a bit of grilled chicken brought in from, you know, out of the Stone Bowl district. You know, with actual like leafy greens and some fruit, <laughs> including some slices of tomato. Wow, big bro, when did you get all splurgy? Is there a job you're about uh, that you've done that you didn't tell me about? Yeah, this uh, Jimbo basically takes the mask off. Yeah, got a job. It's gonna probably pay pretty well. Figure splurge a little. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, if you need an extra, if you need an extra hand, I'm, I'm, I've gotten a lot of practice carrying things around. Well, once we get back, you could probably help out uh, Schmitty with uh, with some stuff there. Because it could be quite good. Uh, Come on, good I've been cooped up here for that. months. Yeah, I know, but I mean, look at me compared to you. I'm kind of one of the lucky ones out there. Believe me, I don't want you to have to deal with this shit. Fine. I care deeply about you, sis. I don't want you to get hurt if I can avoid it. I know this may sound patronizing and stuff, but you're basically all I got left as far as family goes. Don't want to lose that. Yeah, true. That's... Think of it this way. In a couple of years, you'll probably be uh, starting to head out doing some jobs. So, in those few years, I could probably give you like some tips here and there. Maybe some you know, close walks outside... Get a feel for what's out there. Hey, nothing too dangerous, at least not yet. Hey, I'm not planning on joining the black mask, or, black mass or anything. Those guys are crazy. Thank fuck for that. These guys give me the eebie-jeebies, and I don't think doom, they know. Doom, 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 doom. I don't think they know my condition. Is that just like some black mask guys just walking by? Yes. Doom! Dum. They're hitting a bell. I have my head turned and my hood is uh, covering my face. So they really can't see me. Just um, pay attention and focus on my shotgun right now. You're not there. Yep. Well, that's just what he's doing at wherever he is. Yes. We just had like a little uh, yeah. scene break. Yeah. This is what this guy's doing. Yeah. Do, and do, do, so do, that's do, what... My shotgun. You know, yeah. Fine. Just, just don't do anything stupid while you're out there. To be fair, you've seen the company I keep, right? Well, you got a drone. You got a dr you got a drone pilot with you, so... Yeah. And a drone, so... That I mean, this reduces some of the potential yeah. stupidity we might be dealing with. Let's see. Um, and uh, and isn't a Jim Pan playing a sniper a crack? 
Uh, Jim Pan is technically a sniper, yes. Yeah. Um, let me just double check what Jim Pan's character's name is. Um, apparently it's a Jim. What? No, it's Sven. Oh, Sven. And Sven is a and Sven is a damn good shot. So mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about that. It, it should I worry about you? You know, doing something stupid, trying to act, be the big damn hero. Oh, believe me, I know I'm not the big damn hero. I mean, look at this. Like, he then tries flexing his arm, and it's its not a noodle arm, but it's <laughs> exactly very heavily muscular. Yeah. He flexes his arm, and his arm kind of puffs up with the black veins and some It's pus still covered in a cloak. Uh, I'm saying underneath yeah. it, you can feel the black veins puffing up as you try and flex, and a bit of pus squirts into your arm. Your clothing gets a bit wet where some of the blight vein pus comes out. You're going to have hey. to bleach that shirt again. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, as you're doing this, you can see Red is very carefully don't know much about taking that will your uh, forks and your plates, and he's bleaching them. <laughs> uh, what was going What would you say? Well, and, well, I was saying, and my will guy, he, he seemed, I don't know too much about him, but he seems dependent. Yeah. And uh, what word were you saying, uh, Diplo? Uh, the restaurant owner is bleaching the stuff that you've touched after you're done with it. Okay. Because even bleach... though I'm like, even though I'm basically dressed as like a plague doctor, or yeah, it's like still a, safe. Adeptus Mechanicus priest. Yeah. <laughs> also, bleach for some reason kills the blight. Nobody's entirely sure why. They just know it does work. So well, bleach kind of kills everything. Yeah, I know. It's chlorine. Yeah, but at the same time, it's one of those things where it's like. Bleach it's forgotten knowledge. The, you know, well, bleach affects the blight. So, yeah. And that's where we end is, you know, you're saying, I'm not a hero. I'm just a guy in the job. As it cuts over to one of the most tolerant restaurant owners in the city bleaching your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's at least happy that I'm nice and fully clothed, so that way nothing drips. I mean, it doesn't happen very often. That's why I just wanted to make the joke about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, don't bleed on people. Why uh, do you think I dress up so heavily? <laughs> okay, uh, so now, Jim Pan, are you able to talk? Jim Pan's still dead. Jim Pan rolls, but he's not saying anything. Jim Pan... Okay. Uh... So, uh, so as I was going to say, so the thing is that makes, uh, you know, a score like this really fun is yep, a lot of things. Now then, Ty, uh, you could see about getting an employee to help sell your stuff, you know, the wood you're going to be bringing in. You could also pursue another investment. Uh, you could, um, see about doing some other stuff, you know, some troubleshooting to make sure that you're able to keep selling your wood. Uh, and maybe I do some troubleshooting after all okay. to make to make sure that everything is safe or we not get screwed in any way. Yep. As okay. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, hmm. Troubleshooting, as always, the most fun thing ever. Uh, you know, the most fun, because it's not like anything can go wrong. Uh, okay. Um, so let's see, what's the trouble that could potentially... Uh, shoot. Okay, uh, so, uh, you're way right now that... Uh, you know, you're, you're going to be trying to sell this wood, you're going to obviously need to, uh, your troubleshooting is going to give you, as you're scouting out, this is the automatic thing that you get, uh, you're going to need an, um, you're going to need to hire an employee to help you sell it. Uh, so this is where we get to a fun thing. So, a score, where you gather up goods like this and you haul it back, you can only sell up to a certain number of units, uh, per session. This represents basically, you know, people actually buying it, you know, the supply and demand. Having employees means they're able to sell more units. Uh, so you guys can get 11 units. 
and each employee basically multiplies how much you can sell. Uh, it's a volatile good because it's nine and nine. So you can sell three units easily. And you also have somebody that will basically uh, buy those units that you know about, i.e. everybody's favorite, Schmitty. So, you know, you can get five of your 11 units sold. You know, half of it up front. The other half will basically, you know, have to be divvied up over the next few sessions as um, people buy it. Diplo, out of curiosity, yes? with uh, could uh, could we basically do the investment as giving him a couple of those units? That's what I was implying. Yes. By okay, got it. So we can get. So basically, the investment is we give him some of the wood, so that. Uh, so uh, got it. So, this, so that's basically we're taking a couple of units off the table, whatever the equivalent is in market value right now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that would basically what yeah. you do is you give him you give him some of the wood, and he's like, "Wow, that means I don't have to buy as much." And, yeah, so, Ty, you know that uh, if you're going to get any employees with the current supply and demand, you're going to have to deal with people wanting uh, raises, etc., to sell it. Uh, so there's the thing. Uh, you, you know that if you want to sell more of it, you're going to have to hire an employee, for one. But two, you know, the uh, if you do hire an employee, they're going to be trying to get some raises out of you. So you, you know basically the current economic standard is uh, going to hit you hard. Or not so much, you know. Mm. Uh, so yeah. Uh, mechanically, yeah. Uh, so employees have, you know, how much bounty you basically have to pay them. So you lose some of the bounty for the uh, item. Uh, you know, just a little bit representing the fact that you're uh, pretty much paying them on commission. Yeah, that you're paying them to sell the wood, which means you get to sell more. In this case, you'll be able to sell three more units. Uh, so for sure, we can get we can hawk five units without having to put any extra expense into it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you can sell five units immediately, and then Do you guys. I'm thinking maybe we get one employee to sell another three, then we'll keep the last three in reserve. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. I shall name you Winston. Because I just saw the ghost parts just move. Uh, you can, since you're doing that, your troubleshooting gave you that. Uh, roll me a sensitivity check, Ty. Oh, boy. So roll 2d6. Oh, TD10. It's TD10. Sorry. And not d6. Roll your 2d10. Roll your sensitivity, yeah. Ty. Oh! Yay, Ty, you actually did it! Yay! Critical uh, success, nice! Okay, so Ty, you set yourself up for the interview process. You know you're going to have to uh, do some raising and stuff. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. So, okay, so you're in charge of the HR department for this job this time. So there you go. <laughs> uh, so, hey, you didn't fail, so you don't get a methadicted transient. That's the example. Uh, <laughs> th I love it. What it is, is uh, they put the example is failure. You, you get a person that's addicted to meth who's <laughs> who travels around. Crit failure. That methadicted transient is wearing a pantsuit. So they look like they're respectable. <laughs> For some reason, I, I love the examples in this book. Just take your head and go. Uh, well, you got a crit Why success. Why hire this so, dude? So you got a crit success, so you find Will. Uh, Will has got um, the most obvious weapon ever. He's got himself his own katana. He kind of wants to be a taker, but he's not really doing much yet. Uh... Uh, will will uh, since he's good at selling things, he'll make his roll, and that will determine how much of a cut of the lumber he takes from you guys. Uh, based, you know, uh, but he, as he's talking to you, he's like, "Man, uh, if I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to hey hey. So you're my new boss, right? Uh, blue. Yes. Uh, yes. You want me to get you some wood and stuff? 
make a good that's deal the, for you. Well, that's the idea of it. Okay. What are you thinking? Well, I think I can push this over the top. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just uh, with this market, you know, I can easily get you three units out the door pretty easily. Hmm. Sorry, right, I'm, I'm interested. Okay, so I can guarantee I can guarantee you three units, but I'm gonna want a bigger cut than I'm normally getting. Normally, I would take two bounty of the cost for trading. I want four. Uh, and is this per unit he's selling, or yeah, is it he gets for the four of the bounty? So four, per per unit of sold. Yeah, yeah. four, four of them. Uh, so you know it would go from basically you get eighteen to fourteen for those three units, because mm. that's his cut. Uh, per, yeah, per unit, eight, uh, 14 per unit. Yeah. Do you got? Do you guys? Um, uh, you'd have to you'd have to go to us to ask us. So you'd have, you'd have to make yeah, a decision yourself. Will, or go to us. He has to make the decision himself. I, actually, I shall go. He's, no. I shall go. No, nope, no, no, Ty, no, no, Ty, no, Ty, no, Ty guys, Ty, guys, Ty, guys, I'm trying to talk here. Ty, you have to make the decision yourself. You're better than, you're doing the work by yourself. You have to make the choice uh, about this. You can't call on the others. Uh, that That's the... Can we, can we use the negotiate on three and maybe, and maybe we see how you do? Three? Oh, that's, that's pushing it, man. It's real pushing it. Uh, if we're going to do three, uh, hmm. Well, if you I'll, want I'll to, do three. If you want to, if you want I'll do, to. I'll do three on one condition. That's it. If I get all the units out the door in a timely manner, it goes up to five. Hmm. In a timely manner, huh? I can guarantee I can get all three out in a week. We we shall see. Is that a deal then? Uh, so if he so he can do three for sure, and we don't have to pay him three per unit. But if he can sell the entire lot that we can't sell ourselves, he gets five. No, what you're saying? Uh, no, basically, uh, he's basically if he. Uh, he's going to roll in a secret a GM check, which will, uh, based on what Ty got uh, for the crit success, means that Will here has a plus three to his roll. Uh, if Will uh, fails, if he crit fails, then he somehow failed to sell any units. If he just fails, he only sells one. If he succeeds, he sells all three. If he crit succeeds, then he's able to sell potentially more units. And that's what he's offering. If he, he succeeds, he gets five. But if he fails, he only gets, you know, three. Per unit. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, if he crit succeeds, then he can potentially sell a fourth unit. I see. So that's what he's basically offering is uh, if I pass the check, you know, mechanically, that's what he's offering. And that's the thing is Ty has to make that deal. Uh, and you guys won't know until, you know... I start giving you guys the value of everything you turned in, if he passed or failed. So what do you say, Blues? Alright, if you can sell the units fast, that means we can bring them in fast. So... You got yourself a deal. Okay. So we hope... So yeah, we potentially bring in more money as well. In the short term, yeah. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to secretly roll what he gets. Let's see. He's got a plus three to this, by the by, because Ty got that crit sensitivity check. Nice. Yep. Yep. So yeah, you guys won't know till the session if he actually passed, crit passed, failed, or crit failed. But there you go. So that's what Ty is doing. Ty, uh, do you want to do a life event with Reggie? Let me just call my brother on the phone. Well, he lives in the Enclave, Ty. Oh, okay. You're, you're, uh, not, a, you're not bait, Ty. The, oh, no. Yeah, you have to be bait for your uh, family to not live in the Lost. 
I mean, technically, there's another way with stewards, but stewards don't have to, to you know, don't have to give you their family money because their families, you know, you know, well off because some of them are working in the recession. And I've added to the VIPs William the Ninja Negotiator. Oh, boy. <laughs> nice. Hey, uh, hey, little brother. Okay. What, Who's what playing you your little brother? Pretty much. Uh, no, who? Pretty much just who? Seawall or Kiri or Jim Pan? He is a dependent. Another player plays him. Right, well, um. We want to play something who's just breaking into puberty right now. Puberty boy! Well, I, I think I know exactly where this is going. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a support event. Who is, who is willing to play a kid that's confused about puberty? Okay, okay. <laughs> and is starting okay. to feel attracted to girls. Actually, about... Actually... Actually, I have a racist age about. Okay, racist age about them. Um, Thirteen. Yeah, still, I'm, I'm still making that joke. Uh, but you know, uh, who want who wants to play a thirteen year old? Keep in mind, this is just for this scene, which is actually the fun thing is that it can keep being. So let's say, for example, with uh, Kiri, it can keep being Seawall that does Jessica. Yep. Or someone else can play Jessica for a scene. Uh, so it's up to Kiri each time that he does a scene with Jessica. Who plays Jessica? So, who wants to be Reggie? I.e., Ty, pick who you want to be Reggie. Uh, any volunteers? Uh, sure, I'll do it. Anything else I need to know? I guess not. Eh, hey, little brother. Hey, what big bro. How are you? Eh, fine. Just trying to survive this whole mess. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you know that there's actually a small hole in the fence? It actually lets me see some really cute girls. Eh, uh, is. Uh. Pistol whip him! Pistol whip him! <laughs> No. So it's, um... So you're going to that age, huh? It's not exactly a whole lot to do around here otherwise. Just... Just respect the women, okay? Because, um... To, um... Go out with one of these, um... Cute girls, right? One day? Yep. All right, so just um, respect the women and be gentle, like your big, unlike your big brother. Just be the opposite of you. Pretty much. One day you find a nice wife, unlike the opposite of me. <laughs> and that's where the scene ends. Pretty much. As, yeah. uh, because, because remember, the weakness is booze and women, so. As he somehow makes everything worse. <laughs> uh, well, that means next time we do a scene with Reggie, the person that plays Reggie gets to decide did he take his brother's advice into account or not. And or is he showing up with a black eye? Did he show up with another guy? Or did he, you know, just become exactly like his brother? Anyways, uh... You guys are finishing up life events. You're spending time with family or your other dependents. Uh, now then, it's... Uh, you guys know where you're going to be able to get lumber. There's, you know, uh, there's the obvious place of heading over and, you know, getting wood, i.e. trees, etc. There's, more importantly, uh, to the south, there's a pallets factory. Uh, or rather, there's some pallets down there that were used for storing other things, and you're uh, that never got used, so you could basically drag them out. You know, a shit ton of pallets. Pallets, 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 and other lumber from a Home Depot. 
It's been weathered and it's good. Uh, so, uh, let's say this is a four leg journey. So, four legs there. Uh, now that, uh, when do you guys want to do your interlude? Uh, do you want to do your interlude immediately? As the gates to the football stadium are opened and the noise of the enclave fades away as you step out. The air is cool and crisp, a bit dry. Uh, you know, it's not getting wet just yet. And you can hear the distant hum of the wind. Outside of the football stadium, which, you know, dampens all that sound, it's quiet out on the lost. You can hear a gunshot for miles because well there's not noise pollution anymore everything is you know just quiet uh casualties don't make noise after all mm -hmm. making sure my suppressor is nice and securely attached yeah by the by casualties the zombies don't make noise that's how you can tell they're different from vectors casualties only make the noise of their jaws clicking as they rush you Because that's them trying to bite you. Yep. Yeah. I'm making sure my shotgun is well armed and... and the... Alright. Now, before we head out, I'd like to do a, a foresight check to make sure that we did bring up the stuff that we need and we didn't forget anything. Oh, no, you, you have it. You're good. Uh, anyways, yeah, you guys are heading south towards your pallet stop. Yep. Uh, yep. Mark it on the map. Let's give it a nice little... So we need to each burn eight rations by the end of this because it's four legs each way or four legs total? Four legs total. You only... Okay, two there, two back. Well, no, it's technically you only... It's four there and then it's... You retrace your steps back. And therefore you don't have to pay for the legs back. Then we can also oh. represent, you know, two legs there, two legs back. Okay, got it. It represents, you know, the hardship of getting the job done. You know, legs are, you know, meant to be, they can be, you know, just delivering something to X location. So, uh, you know, that's it. Once you get there, you just take the trail back. And since you don't have any supplies with you, there's nothing to do. Other mm -hmm. times it could be, you know, oh, we're trying to uh, deliver the the supplies to this other settlement like the luddites and once you get there uh turns out uh they also actually have a supply thing that they need you to send back and thus you know it's two legs there two legs back but you get a bonus you know things can be thrown in to change up the oh uh, you know little details there you know because yeah. you know you could be getting the it could be four legs there because you have to clear a way to drag all the yep. wood back. Yep. You know, that could represent the four legs. And then it's, you know, just a straight shot home. So, you know, and, you know, you're not going to be shooting anything, so you don't have to worry about anything on the way back because you're just following the path you took. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, you guys are good. Uh, well... Uh, everybody I, can... I say the interlude should be us collecting the pallets. What do you guys think? Well, no, the interlude yeah. won't be collecting the pallets. That will be the actual job site. Okay, got it. So The interlude will be uh, one of you can say or talk about something and to someone else, and the other person responds. It's, you know, two of you role-playing and interconnecting uh, beyond the normal. And, when, and if you want, you can have a random role to determine what you're talking about and how the other one of you responds. But yeah, the question I'm asking is, when do you want to do the interlude? You could do it immediately. Be right back, just getting a quick yeah. call. Yeah, you can do it on any of the legs. First, second, third, or fourth. So which leg do you want to do the interlude? My vote is third leg. Okay, third leg. Same thing. Okay. Uh, right then. Uh, uh, so, Ty, make me an awareness check. Don't you have a boost to your awareness? Yeah, about the same. 
plus the five, yeah. plus the three. Yeah, so that's five over three, so that's a success. Uh, as you guys are continuing down on the lake, uh, you see a, uh, in a backyard of a uh, house area, a campfire has been set up. Uh, and near that campfire is a lone older woman as you're scouting ahead. And she seems to be cooking some large animal. Uh, based on the fact that there's a bunch of meat around, she's got some coal set up on the campfire and a big pot, and she's cooking something. But yeah, you've noticed her. Uh, you can approach or you can not. I'll leave this up to the face man of the group. Yeah, uh, Will, Blues is looking to you. He's pointed out a wo an older woman who seems to have freshly butchered something and is cooking it. Look, I don't recognize her. I say we keep our distance and keep an eye out. Probably a good idea. You know she's crazy right like now. We don't know who she. We don't know who her allegiances lie with either. If she's if she's part if she's part of the Stone Bowl, us not talking to her is not exactly a problem. If she's part of the if she's part of the if she's part of the Chop Shop Boys or the or those uh, damn uh, Mountaineers, that could lead to issues. God forbid she's part of the Black Mass. We deal with those guys every day. Remember, they got the uh, we got the black mass merc. Is it me? I don't want to deal with them on job. Same here. They, we... bur they burned down that supply yard just because there were a couple infected inside, and they didn't have enough ammo. You know how much wood we lost because of that? Yeah, don't get me started. I barely barely had time. I barely had enough to supply. I barely made rent this month. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of you can make a stealth check to avoid her. Guess that would be me. Actually, I think it'd be Jimpan. Yep. So Jimpan, you can roll a stealth check to guide the group. The highest stealth of us all. Yep. Oh, okay. So Jimpan's going to guide you past so you don't have to interact with her. Yep. Roll 2d10. I see on your sheet that you have a stealth of 3, so it's added in the first number. Yep. Jim Pan, uh, that's an 11 over 5. 11, yep. 11 over 5. Yes. Okay, uh, so with some finagling, uh, you know, Sven guides you guys around and past her so you don't notice her as you guys continue on, and the older woman just continues to whistle and work. Whistle and work, whistle and work, cooking up some delicious meats. Okay, uh, that's your first leg, so everybody, uh, Mark, that was, charge off I, your rations. I thought that the interlude was a third leg. That wasn't the interlude, that was just, you guys, oh. each leg is okay. an event, you know, it's something's happening. Oh, got it. Yeah, because each leg represents, you know, you encountering a group, you know, something that's in your way. Maybe, you know, it's just you guys have to move a car because it's going to be in your way for your path. In this case, it was just, you know, oh, yeah, there's this weird old woman randomly cooking there. Uh, we know how to walk past her right now. She's just kind of weirdly there. Uh, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, continuing further south, you guys... Um, actually do come across a crashed vehicle actually okay uh, um yeah uh it's a decent side ford truck uh there's three what look to be corpses in the vehicle we got to be careful with that so um do, does anyone have a knife I'm 
pretty sure I don't either. I could burn three. I could burn three uses, three of my five uses for my pistol to put a bullet in each one of their heads, since I've got a suppressor. But that means I'll be less effective later on. Yep. Is there a way to determine if they're um, if uh, they're infected uh, or not? If they're casualties. Yeah. Uh, well, first thing, uh, make me an awareness check because you're getting close enough so you can see if they have any, you know, gunshot wounds or things to the head. That would mean they're dead, dead, dead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, awareness check. I've got a halfway decent awareness of two, so I guess I'll do it. Yep. Well, you're the one that has the pistol, so you're doing it. Yep. Uh, okay, I'm back. Uh, uh yep, I, I succeeded. Uh, five over one. Four, four over uh, one. We, yeah. we, yeah, four, yeah, four oh, over yeah, one. You so. look at and you're like, huh, yeah. Uh, the only one that seems to be the casualty is the driver. And as you're looking through, you notice they have some, uh, they seem to be fellow takers. Uh, uh, other two the, are dead? Uh, yeah, it seems the other two are dead. Uh, something happened, they crashed. Their buddy is now a casualty, and it's not doing anything right now because, well, it's seat belted and it's a zombie, and there's been no food around, so it's gone into what they call torpor. So it's just sitting there. Uh, Do I even need a roll to put a bullet in its head? Uh, no, you don't. You just need to spend one charge. Because it has yeah, but I'm gonna speed. spend a ch I'm gonna spend a charge to use a one of, uh, to use one shot from my pistol. It is suppressed, so it's cool. and, and I'm just gonna put a bullet in its head point blank. Before that happens, uh, can I give you a little heads up as to what I missed? Uh, the uh, there was a weird lady that was cooking meat. Uh, we just avoided her. We didn't know who she was. We didn't recognize her, so we just thought it best to avoid her. Yep. Okay. And we came across a car with a zombie. SUV, in it. SUV with a z zombie. Um, looks like it was takers. So we're gonna be we're gonna be scavenging the shit out. Yep. Uh, yeah. You guys. Yeah. You shoot the guy. You spend the charge. Uh, well, technically it's two charges, but yes. Yes. And okay. Uh, so you can make me a scavenge check. Um. Do you want me to make the scavenge check, or does someone else want to do that? Because my scavenge is only a plus two if I burn a charge of my, uh, you, uh, you Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll cover Ty as he goes through it. Yep. And, quote-unquote, assist, even though I don't know if there's an assist check in this game. Uh, yeah, that will basically represent you making a check yourself in case things go poorly. Because you guys can make okay, two checks. Uh, Ty, uh, Ty passes. He succeeds. Yeah. 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 Uh, yep. So I, first, just help, I just help inventory it and keep an eye on him. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to just go down and make a nice little handout for your uh, bounty from the job. Uh, is the vehicle still working? Uh, yeah, it it took some dinging and some damage, but it's otherwise okay. Uh, uh, guys, we could use this to get a larger haul. Sure, the yeah. vehicle will be burned out, but we could probably sell it for um, a scrap at, back at the at, back at. Yeah. Uh, All right, the, but uh, one the, question: Who's going to ride it? The only issue is, as you're looking through it, it's only got enough gas to get you halfway back to the enclave. It, well, okay. What we could what we could do is we could see if we can't scavenge some gas on the way. Yep. Just uh, a side yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So that can be a goal: is to look for some other gas along the way. To yep. help fuel this thing, uh, it's also yep. got some goods in its back. What does it have in the back? Uh, looking, it's got some. Because if there's a gas tank in the back, then well. Oh no, it's not. It's not fuel. Yeah. Uh, it's as you're looking in. It's some um, plastic and some Tupperware and some other containers. Uh, you're like, oh, this is a lot of stuff that'd be. Uh, would have been really useful last winter. It's, you know, the supply and demand for all that's gone down because a lot of takers brought it in. Why so, don't we just, why don't we put it into our own personal stores and just, uh, and wait, just leave it as yeah. a, a good, we'll wait till it's, uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah that sounds good. A little yeah, extra so, freebie. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm you guys can you. keep that stuff. It's three haul worth of plastic. Uh, Got it. And how much can this vehicle haul? The vehicle? It's a flatbed. It can haul up to nine. Okay, I'm thinking because Jim Pan is our weakest hauler. 
We'll have Jim Pan driving. Uh, what is Jim Pan's drive skill? Let's check a look. I have He's a also the best driver, potentially. I have two. The only driver. <laughs> I have uh, two. Well, uh, well, okay. Going, it, it's coming back. I'm trying to maximize because the thing is, technically, Jim, I, can Jim Pan still? Can the person in the vehicle still technically haul one, or does their haul get put into the vehicle? Uh, their haul gets put into the vehicle. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll have Kiri drive it there, but we'll have Jim Pan drive it back, unless we're willing to sacrifice one hull of wood. I mean, yeah. we're still technically we're still technically gaining if we can get this vehicle back. In worst case scenario, we just abandon the vehicle and leave where it is if we can't get more fuel. Yep. Uh, you also scrape out the zom zoms. Uh, yeah, also... we're, we're 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 pouring bleach on shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, you find they had nine loose bounty on them. Uh, um, do you guys want to split it equally? Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll split it so, all up once you guys have done yeah, all your got jobs. It. Okay, understood. Yeah. Got it. And uh, bounty, I'm guessing, takes up effectively no, spa yeah, no, no carry space. space. Yeah. yeah, so once you guys... Uh, yeah, And it has plastic. The plastic's value is six, and there's three haul of it. So it's worth 18 bounty. Yeah. But we're going to save it. We're going to yeah. save it long term. You can sell it now. Basically, sell one unit of it. And nah, we're we're just gonna put it into storage. Yep. We'll yeah. wait for it to. We're gonna wait for it to spike. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. I mean, we we could sacrifice the plastic and just get more wood if you guys want to go down that road. I'm thinking that we just, we diversify it and store a little bit of extra. Yeah. Yeah, diversify. Yeah. If yeah, because if wood bombs and and um, what you call spikes, then we have. Yeah, uh, they already. Classic uh, spikes. Then we'll probably sell the vehicle since I don't think we'll be able to maintain it. Yep. Yeah, uh, right now. It's... Which will be one what one of you can do, you know. Yeah. Next session is sell the vehicle. That uh, is a possibility as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh so uh if you use the fuel to get it there, you'll need to get uh you'll need to get um, enough fuel to get it back. So that's going to be your job: is get enough fuel to get it back. Uh, Got it. Because yeah. we are because we already have the wood effectively secure. Yep. So, um, right. Let's go down the things. Uh, we'll so you, interlude is going to be next. Yep. Things. Interlude's next. So, do you want to roll for it? Well, first we got to eat up a, a, another ration. Yep, another two rations. Second, another, cause, yeah, because one for okay. the car, because that was one of your events, and then one for the interlude. So you should be at okay. Three. So a uh, three. You should oh, got three it. Marks. So, yeah, three marks. Okay. One per leg. Oh, yeah. Got it. And then so we're on leg three now. Yeah, uh, which okay. is the interlude. Yep. And uh, where do you think those, uh, rations get marked. Oh, there it is. I see it. Yep. That's we're on. We've just marked three right now. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, and let's see, we got nine supply and nine demand, and you guys are able to carry at least 11 haul, and... Um, well, we'll be upping it to, you said it, we put nine in that thing? You can put so, nine more in the truck, yeah. because, yeah. Yeah, uh, not, uh, I'm assuming three is already taken up by the plastic. Yeah, because that's what it... Yeah, it's got a 12 haul total because it's a flatbed. It can carry a lot of goods. Yeah, yeah. And we're not exactly moving quick with this vehicle. We're basically going at, like, you know, light... Uh, a kind of fast walk, light jog with it. Yep. So moving pretty... Qu moving slow-ish. Okay, uh... Actually, no, we can kind of ride on the flatbed there because yeah, we don't take up... you can all ride in there on the flatbed. Yeah. You can actually ride back in there. You guys can all just ride yeah. on the flatbed. It has room to carry you all. Mm -hmm. Well, what about our haul? Uh, it's uh, well, not your hall. We're sitting on top of the hall. <laughs> well, yeah. So our own independent. So the only person who loses their hall is the driver. Yeah. So you'll go from eleven yeah. to ten for you guys. But we person. gain an additional nine. Yeah. Yeah, which will be nice. Uh, now then, uh, let's start with some things. Uh, who wants to be the instigator of the interlude? The person that sparks the conversation. I, I might. Okay, roll 2d10, Kiri. Uh, 
Boop, boop. Oh, okay. Let's see. Three to nine. Okay. So, Kiri, uh, you. So, Kiri, your, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to seek absolution for this. And who are you talking to? Are you talking to Ty or Seawall? Yeah, talk with Seawall. Okay, uh, Seawall. So, I guess we're what, so we're just what, sitting in the back of the vehicle right now? Yeah, you guys yeah, are talking. We have Ty up, we, yeah, we've got Ty up front because he has the shotgun, so he gets shotgun, of course. Yep. Uh, roll me a, yeah, roll me actually a D10, Seawall. A we're gonna, yeah, we're going to do the actual, you know, fully random interlude just because we might do it once. Three. Okay. Uh, you're trying to be friendly about it. So there you go. Uh, so Kiri's so, trying to seek absolution and you're trying to, you know, be a friendly supportive role. Hmm. You haven't had any jobs that just went to shit? Ooh, yeah. And, and he's kind of a thinking back to his own past uh, since he's done things before the crash. But I'm Tish. Yeah. Yeah, there's one time where I had this client. Uh, basically, uh, what happened is, is that it was a group of uh, 12 people. Obviously me included. So we were doing a job of retrieving some items for him. Turns out he ended up backstabbing us all in the back. And do you want to know the worst part is, I ended up losing some really good friends because of that. They get, and some of the other, one of the other friends I had that survived it, he basically doesn't talk to me anymore because of that. Because of that shit that happened. And he lives like in the upper parts of the, of Mile High. So, us coming contact's not exactly common. I'm just hoping that maybe he could maybe just get some kind of job, get some resolution. Maybe by chance, find the find a job that has us deal with that guy that hi, that uh, client that quote unquote hired us, and maybe bring them along to kill him. At least get some revenge for some of our friends. And my guy pulls out his pistol and goes, "Hey, if the guy Scrooge, he's earning he earned himself a forty five caliber uh, sandwich." Oh yeah, right in the back of the neck. Nah, you, you're going to want to go for right here, and he uh, points to the back of his head, nearby the brainstem. J base of the skull. Gets him every time. That's if you're wanting to be merciful. Just leave him shot in the deck. He's still alive, paralyzed, quadriplegic. Out there. Out and let nature take its course. I use hollow point rounds. Shooting someone in the neck's going to blow the neck apart. Well... <laughs> At the very least, it would be quite cathartic, then. Witnessing uh, all that viscera explosion. That's, you yeah, know, but, hey. Guy, uh... Guy screwed you. Unfortunately, it sometimes happens, but since you lost your buddies, if it was just, you know, it was just a little bit, if it was just a little bit of bounty, that happens. Life sucks, you gotta move on, but losing buddies, uh, that, there's only one way to pay, pay that back. Yeah. Lord knows I've done my more than my fair share of pay, getting payback. Eh, if you ever come across the name Cromwell, give me a heads up. So that's the guy I'll that hired us. I'll keep an ear to the ground. Yeah, and with that, uh, you guys and your interlude, uh, mark off another ration because you're driving. Uh, luckily, so we're at what? We're at four now? Yep, yeah, but because you're driving, you get to skip the event. Oh, nice. Because you can drive. That's what makes cars really good. They basically act like interludes. Got it. Um, uh, so I guess we'll break into a couple of teams. We'll have our scavenger. We'll have our scavenger go out and see if he can't find uh, gasoline to get us back. The rest of us will just start getting uh, the wood together. Yep. Okay. I mean, worst case scenario, we get the uh, car. The car. The car. The car got us here, so yep. it saved us some time. Exactly. Yep. Uh, yeah. So now the 
Now then, who's scavenging? Close me. I'll okay, scavenge me. Okay, Ty, make me a scavenge check to look for fuel. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you're searching around. Uh, we'll get back to Ty. Uh, is anyone else helping scavenge? I'll, I'll, I'll help out. I'm going to burn out of the use of my Ubix specs. Okay. Spend it. Spend it, and... Uh, I might have succeeded in finding fuel. Yeah, uh, you find some fuel, you're going to be able to, uh, together you and Ty are doing that while, uh, Kiri and Jimpan are gathering lumber from, you know, this location, you know, uh, you know, you're yep. gathering it up, uh, it's a home depot that hasn't been raided yet, uh, along with some other stuff, some trees nearby that people have been using, uh, well, you two are doing that in the quiet, uh, you know, bringing over, setting up the lumber. You got the nine units into the car. Uh, and and six eight. units or three units of uh, plastic. No, no. it can. That's the nine units it can hold beyond. Oh, it's, it's, it can only hold 12 total. I yeah. see. So we're getting an additional nine. So actually we are getting a very good haul out. Yeah, yeah you're getting a huge haul. Uh, and um, one question. Yes? Where on the sheet would it be like if I wanted to mark off a charge using the flashlight, for example? Your oh, I see. There's a charge button right there. there. Yeah. Yeah, I and, see it. Yeah, and your flashlight, solar and stuff. So it ends one yeah, of those so shake like, ones. So you don't actually it, need to spend charges on it. Yeah. So like, as we're like uh, gathering some of the material, like if there's like some dark areas, I just use the flashlight to illuminate that, in yep. case there's like maybe some other nice things to get or uh, alert of possible danger. Well, you're doing the lumber thing. Uh, so, uh, as you two are doing that. Uh, you know, gathering up woods. Uh, you guys uh, notice some other people also here. And they kind of pause and look at you. Uh, Jim Pon, I Sven. And everybody's favorite, Jimbo. Jimbo, uh, the, these guys are... Uh, there's three of them. They're they're setting themselves up. They got some uh, backpacks. They got some supply stuff. Uh, they're decently armed. Uh, the one guy in the lead's got some carpet armor on, you know. And so does one of the other guys. They have carpet armor, the best armor. Uh, yeah, the best. And they've all got some weapons, and they're seem to be setting up to haul. And they look at you, and they look at the wood. Do they draw their weapons? Or they're is not it shooting yet. They're just. Uh, and the leader guy starts approaching you. Uh, he's wearing a mask as well. Uh, it's just a very simple porcelain mask, and he just looks at you. Uh, hi there. Hello. Uh, can we help you? You're taking supplies from our territory. What territory is that? What territory is that? You don't know? No. Oh. Southside boys. He holds out a hand. Actually, repeat that. You kind of broke up a little on my end. South side, boys. I bring my uh, hand out and shake it. Jimbo. From, uh... From the Stone Bowl. Uh, uh, we're over from Overland Park. He points, uh to the east and south from you. So if you look on the map, you'll see now a nice pink and green thing. That's where the south side is. Alright, so this right here, that's where they're from? Yes. Okay. And we're obviously here. Yes. Okay. So technically it's not, you know, an enclave's territory is where the enclave is, but, you know, 
he's trying to stake a claim on this. So you're going to be taken from this. You're going to need to split your haul. I figured as much. How much of a split are we talking? He looks over to the others. We'll take 20%. I look to Sven and just like tilt my head. So, do we do that? They start nodding to each other. Uh, as the other two are setting up uh, and gathering up some of the pallets and stuff. So, it seems they knew about, you know, the rage for wood as well and they're trying to capitalize on it to make some money uh ty and i, I guess are still busy yeah you guys are too busy to be doing that so you're not there for this and he's just kind of waiting for so you're saying yes Kiri. yeah okay yeah good that works for us and he'll leave you be so uh there we go um so what uh the leader of the Southside Boys will be coming with you to get his share of the bounty. As he'll help you actually unpack and get everything up onto the truck. And so we don't have the full nineteen that we can carry. We got a little we're a little bit light. No no, he's going to he's going to it's, be, it's gonna be the afterwards he'll take his cut. Yeah. He's going of the nineteen well actually now it's gonna be twenty because he'll be hauling one. Uh, you'll then take the section that you sell off so whatever you sell this session he'll take 20% of it so if so you say made 100 he'll take 20 bounty okay uh, if you guys made 200 he'd take 40 so he's just and because Kiri agreed didn't negotiate which is both good and bad because you you know uh, 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 as he talks he calls himself gas which fits with the gas mask he's wearing. He doesn't say much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can see closer that he's actually got uh, on his torso chainmail. So he's got carpet armor and chainmail. Actually, 20% is not a bad cut because it's only one time that he gets that from this session. Yep. Um, and yep. he also he also doesn't participate in the other trade where we're giving the as investment we're giving that guy wood so that doesn't actually so we're not actually losing as much as we might be thinking yep at the uh, same time we're also gaining something that's very valuable yeah. information yeah. yep uh meanwhile yep, we're gaining information and we are gaining and we're also gaining a little bit of extra movement uh, a bit of extra uh, carry capacity because he's going to carry a little bit which uh, means um what was it which means actually if he was part of the team he'd be getting a fair cut uh, so you will barely scrape by and get enough fuel to get you guys back to the enclave. Yeah. You guys got exactly eight units of fuel, or eight uh, bounty worth of fuel, which is literally exactly what you needed. And you the Southside Boys? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that New faction. Yeah. Yep. Southside Boys. So who are these fellas? Yo, you're not back yet, because as you're oh, gathering up the fuel, right. something's happened. Uh, oh. oh. Oh yeah, you know, so you guys are you know in the back of the Home Depot gathering up the fuel, uh, and you—that's when you hear the click, the of something you know clicking its jaws together. Uh, from the back room, a single casually uh, is stumbling out. Uh, you Earth guys. Fails. Uh, no, that that's not its attack roll. That's how many there are, then how close it is. So it's right next to you guys. You guys are getting the fuel, and it basically stumbles through the uh, disjointed door right next to one of you. Uh, you guys can both roll me awareness checks. Because oh casualties... That's why casualties are scary, is because, you know, they don't make noise. That's the only reason they can, you know, sneak up on you. Is because they're otherwise lumbering... I notice it! I notice it! You so, both both it, so you can both act normally. So yeah, it's right next to you guys. Uh, you guys can try and shoot at it. If you had failed, it would have gotten to attack. 
Uh, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot it. Yep, shoot it. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, you peg the casualty, and it's quiet again. And yep. you guys start gathering the fuel. Tunk, uh, tunk. Wait, I take out both of them? No, there's only one. Oh, yeah, it, it, you it, wrote the, the 2d10 is how close it is and how many there are. So the okay, first die yeah. was how many there were, and the second die was how close, or was it the other way around? Other way around, technically, yeah. yeah. So the thing um, is, uh, casualties can only attack you when they're at one. And they move one closer every round. Got it. And so, uh, that's why they... So, uh... Bl Blue just sees... Uh, just sees, um... Will just casually pull out his pistol and just put it to the thing's head and pull the trigger. Yep. Tunk. Yeah. And just falls can... over and go, huh. Well, that was mildly surprising. Yeah. Puts the pistol back. And yeah, you really. can see into the back room with slash loading bay area. And you can see inside of that there's, uh... This guy just happened to be lucky enough to stumble up the stairs. You know, casualties aren't known for their... Uh... Dexterity? Yeah. They, they kind of pool like water. Uh, uh, quick question. Um, are the stairs made of wood? Uh, no. They're concrete stairs. It, it goes down to a loading bay. So, you know, it's you know about five feet up off the ground. Oh, okay, got it. So, you know, it's just enough that, you know, a casualty... Uh, the only way a casualty is going to rush at anybody uh, or get up those stairs quickly is if the because they saw well the moment they see prey, they suddenly become you know coordinated at least coordinated enough to you know get up stairs, but when they don't have prey around, they kind of you know stumble you know they're drunk basically, and you can see in the loading bay. Uh, there's nine more casualties just kind of uh, bumping around. They aren't paying you guys any attention. They're just, you know, stuck in the loading base. So you could ignore them or you could take care of them. But you don't have that much ammo. Yeah, just quick get the fuel and leave before. I'll, um, I'll, is the, is the loading bay door closed? Is yeah, the that's why they door? haven't left. Um, I'm just going to, as we finish collecting the fuel, just close the loading bay door behind us and just knock a shelf over. And then, is there like a mark that people make when they yeah. found yeah. found some casualties? Yeah, he's just gonna mark next to the door that hey, there's casualties here. Yep. Okay. Just put the just you know grab a can of spray paint off the shelf and just do a quick spray of that. Just just you know be a nice guy to the next guy. Just have that metal shelf just tipped over so they can't. You can also make a scavenge check on this casualty if you want. Um, see if any loot on them. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll burn another use of my Ubix specs because I've got you know a ton of uses of that. Yep, sure, do it. Roll it, roll it. Crit fails. Uh, don't, don't succeed, but... Yep. Um, no, nothing, you don't find anything, it's... Nothing of real value. Yeah. And nothing of real value, just some torn up clothing. Torn up clothing, some, you know, infected flesh, uh, and that's when you guys return, help fuel up the truck, and... Yeah. Notice the new guy. Yep, the south side boy, gas as he's calling himself, and looks at you and nods. Okay, so yep. now, so now uh, Ty and Seawall have just met gas. Yep. Red yep. blues. Yo, who, who's the new guy? Uh, gas from the uh, south side boys. They're located right by the old Overland Golf Course by uh, Ruby Hill. And they're going to help us out. Uh, what's yeah. what's going to cost us? Twenty percent of the bounty that we get. So basically, I yeah, you know, like cut into what we probably would have normally gotten. Uh, not the best deal ever, but hey, it works. You know, might as well be friendly. Yeah. Let's get loaded up then. Yep. We we'll gas it up. We got just enough. We'll have to sell the vehicle when we get back because we're not buying fuel for this. Yeah, it feels a bit pricey. Uh, not good enough for a one-time use. Not to mention the maintenance. Yep. Uh, yeah. So you guys can sell it during next session. You can't sell it during this session. Yeah. Okay. Which, yeah. by the yeah. by, if you don't sell it, it starts to, you know, you know, you have to pay Rough. the upkeep for it. Yeah. You know, you either but, have to either yeah. keep it or you sell it, basically, next yeah. session. Getting a next session, we'll have to sell it. 
Yeah. So that's going to be one of your work events. Uh, yeah, and you guys drive back with your hull. Your uh, yep. ten hull right. carried by people that are walking and the ten hull that's on the truck that's driven by... Uh, it's eleven carried by people, nine on the vehicle with an additional three plastic. Yeah. First, now I would have tried to see if they need a plastic and see if we couldn't have traded the three plastic uh, uh, to get a full haul. No, they don't really want the plastic. Uh, no, okay, so even if we tried that, they wouldn't have been interested. Yeah. Well, I'm pointing out that you know it's 11 and 9. Either way, it totals out to yeah. 20. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that means uh, now we get to the thing. Uh, Schmitty eagerly takes two of your haul of wood. To help with his project, uh, that that is a, just to let you know that is equivalent of eighteen bounty at current price at current market per thing. Yes, which is so, that, so we're giving him an equivalent of forty, well, to, to thirty six. Yeah. Um, also, I'm thinking um, if, if you guys are okay with it, just taking some of that additional bounty and just handing it to him so we can get it to a nice solid forty. Yeah. So you want to spend so, four of your loose bounty on that? Yeah, four loose bounty on it. Okay, so rate of return yeah. is currently 40. Yep. Okay. Uh, we probably should do some insider trading to increase our odds, but hey, next yeah, time. Next yep. time. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then uh, Will got a success, so he sells off three of your haul. So let me, let me that, get let, uh, let and me get you the guys are able to sell off three more. Okay. So, uh, so are, we, are so is Will going to charge us five? Yes. Uh, I'm okay. going to, yeah, wait a second. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's a hundred and eight bounty. So you make a hundred thirteen total so far. Yep. All right. And yeah, because we got a lot more wood than we know what to do with. I guess we'll have to start selling it uh, at other sessions on our. Yep. So you guys have uh, you have uh, well, you can technically have Will keep on selling it. He'll keep selling three units until it's you know okay. supply and demand goes down. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So one hundred and eight, but we got to subtract fifteen from that. Uh, yeah. Well, no. First, you subtract the twenty percent bought by uh, everybody's favorite gas, and then we subtract the fifteen from Will, which leaves you with. 71 and a half, technically. 76. 70, uh, 76? Oh, okay. Because so yeah, the 20% is first, yeah, which yeah. knocks you from 113 down to 90. 91, technically. But, yeah. Uh, you know, because he takes his 20% up front. And then yeah. Will takes his 15, and that leaves you with 76 to dis uh, to split amongst you guys. So now we just take in your upkeep. Uh, so that's that's eighty that's eighty one that we got from this. Is that a pretty good haul? Number one. Uh, wait, wait, let me just let's see. Your upkeep is so seawall is six upkeep. Uh, and this is where we get to the math section. Okay, and ties is thirteen. So that's we subtract nineteen from the seventy six. So we're down to six fifty seven, and then we subtract uh, Jimbo's upkeep and. Uh, Sven's upkeep. Uh, which tab does this say our uh, upkeep at it's, again? It's on the gear bounty near the bottom. Uh, I'm going to quickly check for both Jimbo and Sven. Uh, you, but you guys have definitely made a, quite a lot of money, especially as long as things keep yeah. selling like this. Uh, yeah. And worst case scenario, we just basically store it. Because storage doesn't cost us anything, to my knowledge. I mean, you still have to pay Will, basically. Yeah, um, well, no, no, we we could also just fire Will and say, "Hey, Will, uh, the market's going down." Yep. Uh, or have him try to sell the plastic if the plastic spikes for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that means you guys are, uh, you guys are left with thirty-five, and you have that twelve more haul left to. Uh, yeah. Sell. So, so you guys have thirty-five to divide amongst the four of you. So we each get um, eight and three minimum, quarters. Eight and three quarters. So, yep. but I'm guessing we gotta be at least even. Uh, yeah. So you could basically. 
Oh, yeah, did we also, that also take into account us having to invest our two a piece to the well, server? Well, you did that with uh, the lumber. The, yeah, two bounty, and then we also got nine loose bounty. We gave four to get it up to 40, so a nice even. Yeah. So basically, um, two and, of you oh, did... uh, yep. Sorry, no, no. Did you include the plus five of that extra bounty we had in all that? Yes, that's there. That's why it's 35. 35, got it. So uh, you, guys, you guys could... Um, as is, uh, you guys could each keep. You guys could each take eight, and then just you know, splurge on the rest, basically on your dependents. Yeah. Which would generally be what would happen. So you guys walk away each with eight bounty. Got um, it. So, uh, so eight. I so walk bounty away eight. With, so uh, I don't seven bounty as I spend one and three quarters on uh, my uh, on Jessica. No, no, three quarters of the splurge. Yeah. Oh, three yeah. quarters of the yeah. splurge. Okay. Yeah, basically you're okay. all splurging together. You're all basically pulling yeah. up and being like, like, let's buy this for all those people around yep. us. Uh, yep, I'll, I'll I'll pick up something nice for Jeannie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now let's. See. I think there's yeah. a section to put in your bounty. Uh, yeah. So if you go down, you'll see savings uh, near the bottom. So go down to savings on the gear and bounty page and put an eight. You now have eight in your savings. Uh, where is the, oh there it is? Just yeah. put an eight in anywhere in there. Yeah. Specifically, probably the right side. I'm betting that. Uh, betting that will actually. Yeah, there you go. Goes in nicely there. Doesn't increase. Yeah. Um, that's your savings. Uh, savings can be used for all sorts of things. Fun things. Yay. Oh, so can I also add that three spare bounty that I never spent during character creation and add that to the savings? Uh, yes. So your savings um, would be... Like, I think, yeah, I sold everything. I, I, I bought everything I could. Yeah. I needed it. Yeah. So, yeah, just make sure your savings are your total amount. So there you go. That's where your current savings is at. Nice. And you can spend savings to buy upgrades, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Actually, the best... Um, Actually, because this is kind of end of session, I didn't need it. I'm going to uh, quietly step away and make a phone call. Okay. I'm going to see if uh, if my if I can get some support, i.e., in the form of additional bounty. Uh. Will command uh, do an airdrop of additional bounty? Uh. Their general response is going to be no, because you haven't done anything for the DHQS yet. They, they'll it. note that you you want some additional money for supply runs, etc. Yeah. So they'll note well, that, basically, yeah. Well, this is this is my request for this specific session. Yeah, Other I sessions know. I might make. A they're noting it for later, as in it's no right now. When once we've sent you a thing, we'll give you a little bit extra. Yeah. You know. Got it. Uh, yep. Yeah. And next session, we'll will sell three. And. That will make yeah. You guys are gonna make some nice bank next session. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, well, we're gonna insider trading. We've also got to look into uh, with our networking, see if we can't figure out if the wood prices are still high. If they're still relatively high, we'll sell it and just kind of eat the loss of five. Well, what's gonna happen is the wood price is gonna stay the same. It's every session I'll roll for an event that will happen. Well, you got guys it. are on the so, job. That that will affect things. Okay. So theoretically, it could be actually even more expensive. Yeah, wood could go up. It could go yeah. down. Will could ask for a raise. You know, that's an entire possibility. Do we uh, do we get any stress? Uh, no, you don't get any stress. No, uh, did just you, fall. Guys, you guys just got really lucky this session and made off well. Uh, I had to fire two bullets, but you know those are pretty easy to replace. Yeah. That's covered part of maintenance. Yeah, that's what your upkeep is. So all your charges go back down to zero. Uh, yeah, you guys made it out of this without, you know, you avoided the, you avoided things. You actually used the truck pretty smartly to get you there. Uh, we'll use one of our works next time, probably me, because I've got the best um, stats to try and sell. I'll have you guys handle trying to manipulate the markets. I could have, um, also, I, before we try selling the truck, I could, like, use my mechanics check to, like, look it over. See if there's anything that could be like you know inexpensively repaired that would increase its value. Yeah, you can. Like giving a tune-up. Yeah. yeah, 
That would be troubleshooting, basically. So that would be Got Kiri's it. work action. Got yeah. it. And, you know, um, you guys made out of this relatively okay. You know? Uh, and, yeah, you settle in. Thus begins the adventure of Vikings of the Damned. Yeah. Yep. And, I mean, hey, we lost a little bit of money with those guys, but, you know, like, because we took their right offer at the... At, we know they exist, and also I'm presuming that we... That they that they'll see us next time we bump into them. Like, hey, uh, if we bump into the same guys, like, hey, those are the guys that gave us a pretty good deal for helping uh, for uh, splitting the hall. Yep. Uh, At the very least, they won't shoot us on sight. Yeah. Shoots you on sight. Why? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just love that one zombie just kind of walked up and went, to like bite us, and I just turned around. Hello. <laughs> If either Falsely of you had true. failed, that would have been the one it would have attacked, and it would have been hilarious just to watch it. Because it's like, what? Oh, God! Ah, ah, ah! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Yeah, and I didn't set up, and because I've got a suppressor and I'm using subsonic ammo, because I'm using a 45 ACP. Cause I do, yeah, because I do want to use my shotgun and alert yeah. all the zombies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just kind of poked my head into the room where it came from and goes, oh, that's not good. Closes door, spray paint symbol of their their casualties here, and then uh, pushed a metal shelf in the way, so they're not getting out of that. And then they started whistling, I'm walking on sunshine, while walking out, I guess. Yo. With a can of fuel. I have my shotgun trained just in case. You know, somehow, some way, at, you know. Yep. But yeah, as I said, he just whistled, I'm walking on sunshine, as he walked out. So this this went off pretty well. I mean, we didn't get you know full output, but the thing is, we can't sell everything at once. Yep. So, and um, we how, how how happy was Schmitty that we're heavily investing in him? I'm very happy because you basically gave him all the wood he needs to finish up. So he yeah. doesn't. He just needs to hire people to do the. You know, and the bounty work. we gave him might actually be enough to cover most of that. Yeah, is that bounty will basically cover you know, two workers to, you know, do this, and then, you know, two more to do something else. You know, like, you can basically, you know, cover getting everything set up. You know, you two yep. carry the wood up there, and then you two build the thing. And yep. then he's just going to need to hire somebody out to provide him the, you know, the dirt and, you know, seeds that he's going to need. So, yeah, basically, we covered at least half if not more of that investment so the best part is this is that you guys technically could take the job to gather the you know fertilizer and seeds next time yeah that actually might be a good job yep it may not pay very well but then again it could also just help guarantee that the you know well could we make that could we make that investment a recurring thing where we're effectively the owners and he's just managing it for uh, yeah. No. There, there is a way to actually start up a small business like that. Yes. Uh, but you'd need to uh, negotiate that, etc. You know, basically, like, look, look, uh, uh, look, uh, Schmidt. We brought you pretty much everything you asked for and did the job at a discount. We want long-term partnership in this deal. Yeah, potentially. But then again, you know, maybe Schmidt's already got people lined up for the work you'll find out next session and yeah. speaking of which uh let's see what the event for next session is going to be uh let's see oh yeah there we go so that's what's going to be happening so yeah the good news is yeah so every session for now until things happen will will continue to sell three units so at okay. the end of every session uh, i'll mark off three units and then I'll cut off Will's, you know, uh, wages. Yep. And that'll be added to your end bounty. But that doesn't Got cover it. your break point because there is the potentiality that things go crazy and then he's unable to sell anything because of, you know, yeah. anything from just a random fire to other things. Yeah, um, and what was it? We sold six units and two units consumed as part of the investment. Yep. So that means we have. Uh, so we had twenty units total. Yeah, twelve sold. units left. 
So basically, wow. it's going to be over the next four sessions that your lumber is going to be sold off. Can't we sell it ourselves, or are we at the end of that? Uh, yeah, you can only sell off your initial supply because you know, that, okay. that's what Got Will's it. there for. Will is basically, you know, you can. He's got to hawk it. Yeah, he's hawking it because you guys have to do taker stuff. You know. Yeah. You, worst case scenario, we get a little bit of extra money out of it. I mean, we got a pretty good haul for a session eight, but eight units just to store. Yep. That's enough to keep most of us going for at least a one bad session. Yep. yep. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, yeah. unless, you know, I roll one for the trouble that happens, because, you know, every session there will be a trouble. You know, wages rise, wages stagnate. Uh, if wages stagnate, that's actually good for you, because it means that things are slow enough that basically... Uh, Will's only making the the four bounty version. Yeah. Uh, or wages rise, everything well, goes up by two. Uh, well, I'm presuming that Will is quite happy with our current arrangement, from what yeah, we can tell. Yeah. You do realize that he just made, you know, 15, fifteen bounty. Yeah. Yeah. He technically he has to pay for the upkeep of his stuff, and you know, his dependent, which knocks him down to you know probably, uh, based on the fact that he has that sword, he's. Uh, and you know the basic stuff he probably has at least one dependent but since he's a negotiator he's got multiple uh, <laughs> he's down to probably about seven bounty off of that but seven bounty is still you know he's gotten the equivalent of one cut uh, just under one cut of what we've got so he's probably not he's probably thinking wow I'm actually doing pretty well for myself I didn't even have to risk it, and I got almost as much as they have in the bank yep uh, of course, you know, that's, of course, assuming he doesn't also have a gun. If he has a gun, then he's down to five, yeah. but that's still, you know, a nice cut because yeah. that's enough to last him another week in case things go yeah. poorly. Yeah. Yeah, so he's he's making off his bank, and, of course, you guys yeah. can hire in other employees that potentially sell you more. Though, they'll come in based on what you roll, so you could get uh, Meth Lady. Oh, yeah, uh... Yeah. My money is the lady was cooking human that we stumbled across. Uh, also, by the by, act of God is basically your business gets shut down because something just something happened. Turns out Jimbo's been selling drugs on the side. So not Jimbo. Um, uh, schmitty has been selling drugs on the side and he's been arrested. All of his assets. Seen. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Or, I or you know, like I like, suicide work. It probably is like either a researcher or a mechanic. Because I doubt they'd have me work in a hospital. And then there's the fun fact of you guys have references. So when you guys, you know, uh, are out on the job, you guys can spend a charge from either uh, Jim Pan's laptop or Seawall's Ubix, or just during, you know, stuff in the Enclave, you can spend a charge from those, as long as Jim Pan or Seawall is willing to let you. And you can use that for something very useful, calling in a reference. You have a number of references to start with equal to your charisma. Uh, you get you can get more by doing good jobs, etc. When you call on the reference, you can use them basically to auto pass a networking check, etc. You know, or you know, hey, I want to know about this location. You know, calling in a reference lets you you know get information. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, oh god, yeah, F five is bad. <laughs> you know. So references can be used for if you guys really want to know every single job option available. You know, like, oh, none of us passed the networking check to know if there's any jobs available. Or, you know, we only passed the network check to know that, hey, here's the three jobs. We know that there's high risk job, medium risk job, and another medium risk job. And that's it. We don't know who's doing them. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, so for jobs, this is an important one. Uh, when you make the network, um, I'm check, presuming buy and upgrade only costs one money unit, correct? No, it costs two. Oh, it costs two? Okay. It. Uh, it costs one during character creation. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to get extended magazines to remove the hunger on my pistol just so I've got more shot. Um, it's not going to be extended magazines. Basically, my guy's buying is, is buying more ammunition and more magazines. Yeah, I know. It's just called extended magazines because, you know, it's a easy thing to reference as a term yep and i've got i'm now down to six but hey i just wanted to get rid of that because that was a bit of a week 
Yeah, it, it makes it so you're using two charges per shot. Now down to one charge a shot, which means I got ten shots. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, I'm referencing this for when you take a job. Uh, so, you get, let's say you guys had decided to do some job stuff this session. You would have rolled your reference, uh, or rather you would have rolled your network. Let's And then let's go with Seawall's roll of a crit. Seawall then could know, okay, I know there's three jobs. So that's the first networking check. Then he could, Seawall could find out the price point of one of the jobs. That's the thing. So each success lets you know uh, one detail. So one success lets you know how many jobs are available. Um, then you can find out who's, you know, offering the job like oh this NPC is offering the job or this NPC is offering the job or this NPC and another success lets you know how much it's worth and then a third lets you know what's the risk so let, let's say for example there was um, three jobs out there uh, so you would know there's three jobs and then you and Jim Pan had one more information thing each so you could each learn the value of one of the jobs, or you could team up to know the value and the risk, or to know the person and the risk, but you'd only know that for one of the jobs. Basically, you're getting one more piece of information per success. Yep. Yeah, and that's why references are useful, because you can spend a reference to basically go, hey, I've called in this guy that's a DJ, who does DJ stuff on the radio. So people have something to listen to rather than just the deafening silence of nothingness. This DJ, oh hey, DJ reference, what can you tell me about this job? Yeah, here's what I know, it's got this bounty. So you know, he's like, this is the cost. So you could find out that. Uh, oh yeah, also, trouble number five is bad. Uh, which is basically... Uh, People are stealing or units get damaged because of time, etc. And you lose a yeah. number of units based on a D10 roll. Which is, you know, the shitty one. Uh, oh yeah, sixes. Oh yeah, demand rises. So the price of everything goes up. To be fair, your demand can't get much higher than it currently is. <laughs> it's nine. Isn't ten the max? Yeah, ten's the max. And the supply is going to take a while to stabilize. Yeah, uh, and uh, so, yeah. So what it is is basically every session I'll be rolling the trouble, and that uh, one is act of God. Your business shuts down unless you guys basically all do your work events to troubleshoot, which is basically you guys are like going to the you know yeah we're not inv we're not involved with this you know it'd be like oh it turns out Schmitty is a meth dealer, uh, yeah. and you guys were working with him on the you know garden. That would basically be you burning all your money to help that. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Eight is liquidity increases. Basically, one more unit is sold. Uh, that's it. It's just eight is one more unit sold than normal. Uh, nine is one less unit sold than normal. Mm -hmm. Uh... So there's a 1 in 10 chance of Act of God? Yeah, which is basically something went really shitty. It's a 1 on the D10. 10, meanwhile, is Windfall. Yeah. Uh, I, I, roll a, I roll a die, which is basically the number of new units your company comes into, in case basically you guys are currently investing in lumber sales, Will's lumber sales, as it, or rather it's Vikings of the Dam lumber sales, with Will as yeah. your employee. Uh, and we pay him on commission, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what it is is, uh, yeah, I love this. Uh, Windfall is basically, I roll, that's the number of units that just suddenly are in the market that you guys can buy for the demand price. Not the supply plus demand, just the demand. So you guys could basically restock your supply. That's what yeah, 10 I'm, Windfall is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need to be selling that vehicle next time, which I've got a feeling is going to be worth a little bit. Though it is a specialized item because it does require fuel and we are in an area where fuel is a bit scarce. So it's going to be... I can sell it for scrap, that's for damn sure, but... 
I mean, at it's the same a house. time, I want to see if I can make it worth a little bit more. I mean, yeah, as I'm going to point out, it is a house, basically. Uh, as the put it simply, uh, people are going to be willing to pay at least what its upkeep is, which is five. You're guaranteed okay. to be able to sell it for five. Got it. Uh, because even if you fail, I, it's a truck, and somebody can basically be like, I bought the truck, so I then spend some money to buy lumber, and now I've built a house on the back of it. Yeah. And maybe as part of that, they ripped the engine block out, and other bits of metal were ripped off it, and they were sold to the foundry to cover the wood costs. Yeah. Uh, they could also, you know, turn it into a mobile home and other things. Oh, yeah. Uh... Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. And four is just business as usual. Nothing happens. Yeah. Anything can happen. Yay. So next session you'll find out. And I hope you all had fun. Any questions, comments, or suggestions? Uh, nothing I could think of right now. Nope. You guys just made out of this, you know, rolling a bank. Yeah. 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 And I just... You know, got myself extra mags and uh, secured extra ammo for long in the long run. Yep. Uh, Honestly, I don't really think there's anything I need to buy. Yeah, I'm good. I I, I will save my money for the yeah. rain for a rainy day. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm saving the rest. I don't really have much use for anything else. I mean, I could pick up. Where is it? I mean, um, as yeah, I could pick up uh, the Dead Eyes hack. And get a plus two to shooting, but uh, yeah, you guys can buy uh, upgrades. It's two bounty per upgrade. The other yep. thing you can do is uh, you can spend one bounty to give yourself one skill point, so you could make yourself have like one and unarmed, or you can spend two bounty to increase a one to a two. So that's how you're you're basically investing money to get help in practicing a skill. Uh, so, um, uh, and then potential, I'm guessing that's expensive to increase. Uh, that's 10. That's 10. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, as an example, uh, excuse me, uh, Jim Pan could spend one bounty to upgrade his foresight to one. Uh, excuse me. Uh, because again, you can't increase a skill beyond its potential. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Or Jim Pan could spend one to give himself melee one, so Jim Pan knows how to use an axe. Uh, and using, let's look at Ty. I can give some suggestions there, and then let's look at Jimbo, Jimbo, Jim Bob, Jim Bob. I love how my name's the only one that's written in quotation marks. I mean, they're all technically taker names, which is the, probably the weirdest thing is the fact that your group has a guy that goes by. Sven and Will. Like, they get Sven because, like, Vikings are the damned. Oh, Sven, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then they look at Will and they're like... That's my name. Don't see another reason to get another name. Right, Weird Taker. The weirdest Taker we've ever dealt with. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, for example, uh, Ty could grab one in melee. So you could get one in melee or one in resistance. Or he could get one in criminality, or he could upgrade his drone pilot to two. Uh, buying also, he can upgrade his drone. Yeah, he can also upgrade his drone. Uh, the standard thing is, you know, whenever you're increasing the skill to, that's how much bounty it costs. So, you know, upgrading a skill to one costs one, upgrading a skill to two costs two. Uh, and you can upgrade a number of things equal to uh, I think it's one or it's actually I think it's your intelligence one or the other. I'd have to look at the thing again. Okay so if I were to upgrade a skill from zero to two that would cost two skills or three skills? Three. One to get it to one and two to get it to two. Okay. So what do you think of increasing? That's what I thought. Now I know. Yep. Oh uh, yeah. So you could technically use that to upgrade... You could also upgrade your melee to two, Kiri. So you punch people better. 
Kiri, you also have a two in strength. Yeah. You're a fairly strong guy. At the same time, I'm not a fighter. Yep. You could also see about saving up and upgrading your charisma eventually to two. Or you could spend, you know, three upkeep and upgrade your first aid to three. Yay. And be a better doctor. And thus reduce the chance of infecting somebody. Yay. Yes. Yep. Just keep that in mind as you do things. Uh, yeah. And we'll go with that. You can upgrade one potential if you have the bounty for it, which is expensive. It's ten. Or you can upgrade two skills. Uh, or you can upgrade one skill and buy an upgrade. Or rather, upgrades. For your gear. Uh, is there any upgrades? I don't think Curie really needs any upgrades, except for maybe buying uh, off the clunky on his toolkit. Oh yeah. Mounted will be good once Curie actually gets a gun. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Then you can mount it on an axe. I mean, to be accurate, that is technically a possibility. You could mount it on an axe that you buy. Uh, oh yeah. And Ty could uh, upgrade and buy a spread on his shotgun so he's able to hit two casualties at once. Or he could buy uh, armor to make it so that whatever his drunkie's name is, is able to take a better punch. You know, it doesn't break. Or he could add in surveillance software to turn the drunkie into a scout for the party. Or add a PA system and be like, Follow me! Follow me! Follow me! Leads off some casualties. I am tasty! Casualties follow the sound. Find out it's not something tasty. Wander off. Maybe we should dis discuss this with the party. Yep, yeah, you got a lot of options. And yeah. you also can just inject somebody with the, you know, hey! Yeah, you can always inject somebody and make them into a latent. <laughs> Who wants to take the drug? K7864. They did test batches of 9,999 people. And they started at A, and they ended at K7864 before they found the cure. I.e., what is called the suppressant. Which makes people latents. Yay! That's always... A, I love that detail. Yay. 